Priscilla Joyce Gonzalez. Have all parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes. All right, court is calling 2022 CR 9680, State of Texas versus Priscilla Joyce Gonzalez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Lindsay Shaw for the state. Defense? Christine McDonald for Priscilla Gonzalez. Are you Miss Gonzalez? Yes, ma'am. Right. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report? State? No, ma'am. Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Um, according to the witness, I'm sorry, according to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 13 years in the prison. You entered a plea to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, the state is opposing your application. And defense, any witnesses? Judge, I have one. And um, if I could just get some exhibits to finish. Them. Okay. No, I mean, the state will go first, but I'm just wondering if you have witnesses. Well, possibly two is my client. All right. State, do you have any witnesses? Yes. All right. And um, Ms. Abrams, if you'd like to go over conditions with them, you can because they have witnesses. All right. State, call your first witness. Calls Ruth Turner. Ruth Turner. Give me a second. Ms. Turner, do you need to uh, be seated to have a seat? Please. All right. Can you use that chair there, please? All right. All right. Ms. Uh, Turner, I'm going to ask that you keep your voice up so that the court reporter can hear. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. All right. All right, you can lower your hand. Can you state your name for the record? Ruth E. Turner. All right, state. Good morning, Ms. Turner. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Turner, I want to start out by asking you, where, where do you live? In uh, Bronx, Virginia. And how long have you lived there? Probably now about 20 years. Okay. And back in July, um, the specific day, let's see, was, I'm sure you can tell me the specific day, but the 19th July 19th of 2022, were you in San Antonio, Texas? Yes. Well, why were you in, in San Antonio? To celebrate our niece's 16th birthday. And who all came with you to San Antonio? My husband, Frank, Beva, and myself. Okay. Yeah. I have to be able to speak up just a little bit. All right, if you just give her the microphone. 
Right. She's going to repeat it just a second. Thank you. That's okay. All right. And if you'll just speak into the microphone, then she'll be able to hear. All right. State. And so you said your husband, Frank, and your niece, David Turner. Yes. Do you recall uh, on July 19th, 20, uh, July 19th, 2022, when you were assaulted? And we're going to get to that. But um, how long had you been in San Antonio before that day? We were at Don San, so we've been here. This was our third day. Okay. So only your third day in San Antonio. Yes. And so do you remember that day well? Oh, yes. Okay. So let's talk about that day. What had you done? Uh, that morning, that morning. We had um, gotten on the um, bus to take a tour of the city. We stayed on the bus for two two complete tours, and uh, I needed to go to the restroom. Okay, so um, at some point you got off the tour bus? Yes. And did you go to River Center Mall? Yes. And did, you, did Frank and David go with you as well? Yes. We all together. Okay. And um, which restroom did you go to? We went to the lower level because it was the first one I saw. And at my age, I can't tell you very long. And Ms. Turner, how, how old are you? I'm 76 now. Okay. I'm 75 now. At the time. Okay. Yes. So once you, um, do you recall when you went to the restroom, were there other people using the restroom at the time? No, there was no one in there except me. At what point did you um, see the defendant come into the restroom? I was washing my hands at the sink. Okay. And when you first saw her, what did she do? Um, she, she barely glanced at me. I smiled, but no words were spoken. So no, no words between you or her were exchanged? No. And at some point, did she begin assaulting you? Yes, yes. Okay, attacking them. Attacking them from behind. Okay, so I want you to walk the judge through that. How did it begin? I felt severe pain around me, my scalp and my neck, and suddenly I was being thrown into the floor. So, I had sandals on, so I, I really lost my balance very quickly. So when she began <laughs> attacking you, was she stabbing you? Yes. Okay. And where was where was she stabbing you? In the back of my head in the beginning, but once I was on the floor and she was on top of me, the, the stabbings were primarily in my neck and around my my ears. Okay, so she began stabbing you and in, in your the back of your neck and your head. Yes. And then you she pushed you to the ground. Yes. And once she got you to the ground, did she get on top of you? Yes. How was she on top of you? She was straddled me. Uh, like a horse with her knees at my sides. And she continued to stab you while she was on top of you? Yes. And did she ever say anything to you? No. Did you, What did you say? What I you asked do? her why she was doing this to me, and I started screaming for help. I noticed on the walls of the bathroom blood splatter, so I, I put my left hand on my jugular carotid and trying to finger off with my right hand. How do you know to do that? I, I was an RN. Okay. And at some point, did your niece, Deva, come into the bathroom? Yes. Okay. And once she came into the bathroom, was the defendant still stabbing me? She had drawn the knife up by her right ear. And it had to be a God thing because the only thing I could think of was to utter, Father, forgive her for she doesn't know what she's doing. And it was like a freeze frame. She, she froze in place. Okay. And when David came to the bathroom, what happened? Um, Deva saw what was happening very instantaneously and took out her knife and uh, stabbed my sailor in her back. And once David did that, did the attack end? On me, yes. Did she then try to go after David and your husband, Frank? Yes, she instantly got off of me and, and 
from that point on, the relief on my person was immediately taken. Away. And uh, I want to show you some pictures, Ms. Turner. Now, you've looked at these pictures today, but this morning, correct? Correct. And if we start with states exhibits number two, three, and four, um, you've seen these pictures today, is that right? Correct. And they're a fair and accurate depiction of the scene Correct. of that day and how it happened. And they've not been altered, correct? Correct. At this time, the state would offer states exhibits two, three, and four into evidence, pending objection. May I tender to the court, Dutch? Yes. So states two, three, and four are admitted without objection. So, Ms. Turner, after the attack stopped, were you taken to the hospital? Yes. And can you tell the court what injuries you sustained? I was diagnosed with having uh, 10, at least 10 staff wounds. Um, my infernal jugular was severed. Um, there was numerous um, nerve endings that were severed. Um, 24 hours afterward, I went into a traumatic atrial fibrillation, which meant um, I had to be put on blood thinners and a beta blocker. Um, the blood thinner alone is over $500 a month. Um, so far, I think I am in normal sinus rhythm, but I don't go see a cardiologist until the 18th of May. And you also had uh, your right earlobe was severed? Was yes. Right? And that had to be sewn back together? Yes. And you also sustained broken ribs, is that right? On both sides, yes. Okay. And are you still, um, as far as your wounds, they have healed, we can see that you still have scars from, from those. Is that what we can see on your neck today? Yes. yes. And do you, even to this day, experience pain in, from, from your wounds? Yes. What kind of pain is that? It's primarily um, any touching sensation of my ears and parts of my neck. Um, I have no sensation of hot or cold on my neck, only pressure. Okay. And then I guess I'll go ahead and um, show you states exhibits five, six, seven, and eight. Are these also pictures you have reviewed before <laughs> testifying today? Yes. And are they pictures of you in the hospital? Yes, before and after you received uh, medical attention or, yes. or in surgery, right? Uh, have they been altered in any way? No. At this time, I'd offer also offer states exhibit five, six, seven, and eight into evidence pending objection. Objection, Your Honor. May I tender to the court, Your Honor? Yes. Offer into evidence and tender. All right, states exhibits five, six, seven, and eight are admitted without objection. Ms. Turner, after all this happened, uh, you had to go through a, a four hour surgery, is that right? Have you had to have follow up um, treatments and surgeries since this happened? I've had follow up treatments. What kind of treatments have you had to go through? Um, I've had to have an echo to make sure that the uh, jugular had no. Um, problems as far as um, obstructions within. Um, I've had um, a cardiovascular surgeon check me. I've had a um, cardiologist check me and my primary care physician to make sure my medications are proper. And, and Ms. Turner, how has this affected your life? How has this changed you? How has this impacted you? Unfortunately, I'm now an elderly person. Prior to, I was um, vibrant, active, um, socially engaging. Um, now I find that it comes with gold. And have you seen changes in, in Deva as well? Have you seen her have to struggle through this? Absolutely. And, yes. your, and your husband, Frank, as well? And Ms. Turner, lastly, I'd like to ask you, what would you like to see um, happened to Ms. Gonzalez for what she did to you? I've, I've prayed about this a lot, and 
I would sincerely pray that the Lord work in her life and that, that she will come in contact with somebody that will introduce her to Jesus and let her know that God loves her and can give her peace and, and comfort that nobody on her planet Earth can. And I would like justice to prevail. Would you like to see her go to prison? And I, and I know that that's a hard question, but do you feel that she sh is someone who should be out uh, free in the community? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'll pass the witness. Yes. Have any have any of your loved ones ever suffered from any type of mental health illness? I uh, yes, our niece has had uh, issues with depression. What about schizophrenia? Um, I she's never been diagnosed, and none of my family has. And you said that you're uh, you know, you work in the medical profession. Yes. So you're familiar with with what kind of symptoms someone with that diagnosis would have. Yes. Um, would you agree that people with, with that sort of diagnosis um, need help? Oh, absolutely. They need treatment? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions? No, ma'am. All right. I, I will tell you this. San Antonio is a nice place with nice people. I'm so sorry that um, your trip here ended that way. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming in. I just get the spelling of your niece's first name. D A B A. All right, state. Any other witnesses? Judge, may I just have one moment? I'm going to confer with you. Sure. The state's going to call David. All right, so just so everyone can know, I've read the police report and I've read the stipulations. Okay. All right, you can come forward. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you hear will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God. All right, you're gonna have to speak up. Yes, ma'am. All right, state your name for the record. David Turner. All right, state. David, I just want to ask you a couple of questions, okay? And mainly, I want to focus on how this um, how this has impacted your 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 own mom, Ruth Turner. How have you seen? Um, how did this change Ruth? How, what have you, how have you seen changes in her? First off, um, she's a very religious person and I thank God that she has deepened her faith and is so grateful for what God has done in her life. Second, she was a, she's a very hardworking woman. And after this attack, she no longer had that sort of spirit in her and that pains me probably the most and has it also been hard for you to cope with the effects of, of this attack and what happened yes um i've been ridiculed at school for being the person who stabs people i've had my ptsd come back i've had flashbacks i still hear screams at night it's Hard. Is there anything else you want to tell this court? I don't think a person like this should be let out back in the community because we're not even from here. And for someone to do that to someone who's just coming here for family vacation shouldn't be put out in the community for her to harm other people. Thank you, David. No further questions. Any questions? Yeah. All right, thank you. Stay, call your next witness. We have no more witnesses, Judge. All right, defense, do you have any witnesses? Your Honor, I'd like to call um, 
social worker, Ms. Marisol Morales. Ms. Morales, if you'll come forward, please. Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record, please. Marisol Morales. All right, just make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. Defense? Your Honor, before I begin with testimony, I'd like to put uh, Defense Exhibit 1, 2, and 3 into evidence. These are medical records. Well, Defense Exhibit 1 is medical records, a CD of medical records from Methodist Specialty. Defense Exhibit 2 is a CD of me medical records from Mill Ridge Treatment Center. And Defense Exhibit 3 is medical records from UHS, Your Honor. These have been um, filed via business record affidavit and have been on file for an excess of 14 days. They have also been tendered to the state. All right, any objection? No, Judge. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to publish some printouts um, of these records to the court. I've labeled them. All um, right, defense exhibits one, two, and three are admitted without objection. Judge, if I could publish to the court. Um, defense exhibit 1A. Um, Ms. Morales, are you familiar with my client? I am. Um, can you tell? How are you familiar with it? I have been meeting with Ms. Gonzalez for over the course of almost a year. And what are the purpose of your sessions with my client? She put together her psychosocial history, looking at her background, gathering medical records to determine what's been going on in her life. And can you please tell this court what she's been diagnosed with? Schizophrenia. And can you please tell the court what kind of symptoms go along with this sort of diagnosis? Schizophrenia is most marked by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, um, illogical thought processes. So, uh, paranoia is also another large symptom. And can those symptoms be managed with medication? Yes. Have you had an opportunity to go over mental health records that relate to my client? Yes. What records did you review? I reviewed Laurel Ridge, University Health Systems, Methodist Specialty, and Nick's Hospital. And from reviewing those records, how many times have my client has my client been hospitalized for her mental health in the past five years? Approximately five to seven times. Okay. Um, I want to begin with Methodist specialty. Um, can you tell me when was Priscilla admitted to Methodist specialty? She was admitted June 11th, 2018. And do you know why she was admitted? Um, I believe here she was emergency detained. Okay. And do you know what type of symptoms she was exhibiting at the time? Paranoia and that people were threatening to harm her. And people threatening to harm her. Do you know from reviewing the records if he was ever physically restrained at Methodist? He was. Was she exhibiting aggressive behavior there? He was. Did anything else stick out to you about those records? For Methodist specialty, she was admitted on June 11, 2018, and she was discharged on 7-24-2018. And consistently through the daily progress notes, it's noted that her insight was poor. I wanna pause you right there. Can you explain to the court what lack of insight means? All right, and so just so all parties know, I'm extremely familiar with the mental health terminology. I used to do a lot of work with mental health issues. So, um, counsel, if you wish to continue to ask, you can, but I'm aware of it. I'm aware of schizophrenia and the symptoms for schizophrenia, but um, it's your witness. Yes, sir, there's just specific things I want to sure. point out to the court. No Here's problem. Could you repeat the question? Well, um, can you, well, let me ask you this, lack of insight, is that, um, is that a symptom of mental health? Yes. Um, was there a plan to have Priscilla admitted to San Antonio State Hospital during her Methodist specialty hospital stay? Yes, that was a recommendation upon her discharge. And was she ever committed to that there? 
No, she was not. Does the, do the records indicate why the physicians decided not to civilly commit her? No, there were no notations. What did the doctors ultimately do upon discharge? Uh, they recommended that she participate in what is called AOT, a sort of outpatient treatment. And someone who's lacking insight because of their diagnosis, can they be expected to understand the necessity of following up with treatment? No, um, lack of insight is sometimes confused with being in denial of your diagnosis or you're being stubborn or... Um, but lack of insight means that you do not understand that you are ill. And upon her discharge, she was given an appointment and set to go, even though the doctor noted on her discharge that her insight was poor. I want to move on to Laurel Ridge Treatment Center. Did you have an opportunity to review those records? Yes. And does Laurel Ridge have different levels of observation for their patients? Yes. And I've handed the court a copy of those um, of those records. Can you show the court what where it's it states Priscilla's level of observation? That would be on the shift nursing assessment over on the left hand bottom corner level of observ level of observation. What was her level of observation? To be seen and monitored every 15 minutes. Is that the highest level? Yes, it is. And what's the date of that assessment? This would be a couple of days before her discharge, 9-15-18. And what was her date of discharge? 9-18-2019. And on... Oh, I'm sorry. It was her discharge date is... Um, 2019. Um, and on the nursing note, does, does the nurse indicate that she is still symptomatic? Yes. Can you point out that to the court? That would be on the second page in the bottom behavioral. The box that's checked off is psychosis. Laughing to, st to self, staff noticed. Talking to self, upset after phone call, but not able to maintain. But okay. able to maintain. Okay. Now, um, if I can turn your attention to the physician progress note in, from the Laurel Ridge Treatment Center documents, um, what sticks out to you about this? The most important thing that stuck out to me here was that her insight was still fair. I mean, she's been in the hospital for, I think, 25 days, and she's still symptomatic, and the doctor's still noting that she lacks insight. And that physician progress note, is that was that taken on her date of discharge? Yes, 9-18-19. Okay, and at the date of discharge, was Laurel Ridge still observing my client on their highest level of observation? Yeah. Okay, so on, upon the date of discharge, that facility still felt that my client needed to be monitored every 15 minutes. Correct. If someone, and just to be clear, these there's other options other than just if someone is still exhibiting these types of behaviors, right? Yes. Okay. And Laura Ridge didn't utilize any of their other options. No. Even though she was symptomatic, they discharged her. Did you have the opportunity to review medical records from NICS? I did. Do you know the date of admit for NICS? 11819. For NICS? 11819, yes. For the admit date, that was noted on the UHS records, yes. Okay. And um, do you know why she was admitted to NICS? I believe that she was also an emergency detained for bizarre behavior. All right, everyone, just give me one moment. Stay where you are. After failure. After failure. And this is a perfect example of somebody 
who needed longer hospitalization and for whatever reason, she was being discharged back out and told, <coughs> now go to your next appointment. That's what Ms. Judge. Have any questions? Just a couple of questions. So you, you said that she, and it's in the medical records, that she was released from UHS on January 25th of 2019. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, that she had gone to NICS, yes. Or NICS, I'm sorry. And how long had she been there? She had been there seven days. So are you aware that uh, just a few days later, January 28th of 2019, she was arrested for committing aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? Yes. And so I guess my ultimate question is, you would agree with me that she is a dangerous individual, wouldn't you? No. So you don't agree even though, you're, are you aware of the facts of this case today, yes. why we're here? Yes. And you would not say that she is a dangerous, violent individual? I would say that some of her, that yes, her behavior, um, she does have an assaultive behavior history, yes. And you would agree, uh, would you agree with me that she is a, a danger to herself and a danger to the community? With the proper treatment, no. No further questions. Any other questions? Ms. Morales, is this type of diagnosis manageable with medication? Yes, in long term hospitalization. To get someone stable with this type of diagnosis, does that require long-term care? Absolutely. Does that require consistent care? Yes. Has Priscilla received that? No. I'll pass the witness to Judge. No further questions. All right, thank you so much for coming and thank you for uh, working with those who have mental health issues. And I do understand that a lot of times people who have mental health issues People just push them along through the system because their issues are too complicated. And the goal is let's get them stabilized. Good luck to you. So I understand. Thank you so much. Thank you for understanding, Judge. All right. Can I be excused? Yes. Are your next witness? Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to call my client. She has a letter that she'd like to read. All right. If she plans on reading the letter, then she's going to potentially subject herself to cross examination. Can I have a minute with my client? Yes. yes. Judge, my client has chosen not to read the letter. Oh. Uh, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor, just argument. All right. Court will hear a brief argument. State. Judge, what Ms. Gonzalez did to Ms. Turner, to Frank Turner, to David Turner, is horrendous. She, I think Ms. Gonzalez is lucky to be standing here in front of you today with only this charge with only aggravated assault because what she did that day on July 19th, 2022 to Beth Turner was, I think, I believe that her intent was to kill her. She was going to, um, she found an easy witness, an older witness. And I think she knew that this was a person who could not defend herself and who could not attack back. And she preyed on her. She made that decision to go in there and stab her numerous times. And then she had the gall to tell the police after she was stabbed by Deva, when Deva was protecting her aunt, her grandma, uh, that the bitch stabbed me. I believe those were um, some of the words that she used. And I understand that Ms. Gonzalez has mental health problems, but I think what the court has to consider is the severe threat that she poses to not only this community, but, but, her, but herself. And I think someone like this, the, where she needs to spend some time is the prison. And she's been treated and she's had treatment in the past and she continues to exhibit this type of behavior. And I think it speaks for itself when we look at the fact that she was released from Nick's hospital on January 25th, 2019. And but a few days later, she commits an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon separate from the case that we're here for today. I think she 
is violent and and she has shown this court that with the fact that these are the types of offense that she continues to commit right, and counsel what do you say to the fact that the state presented a witness a mental health expert that she was released and she was not and she should not have been released from the mental health hospital it was a situation which i've seen before where people have mental health issues they get treatment and they just stabilize them and then release them without medication without proper support and just send them back into the world because not my problem i want to move on to the next person and we're done Woo. Thank you. We got her out of here. So what do you respond to the defense's witness? Because that's what the defense witness said. The defense witness said that she never should have been released from the hospital. And it appears that she was released from the hospital and then immediately went out and committed this act. My response to that judge is that now we have, we have innocent victims here in the courtroom that are, are victims of, of her behavior. But let me ask you this, how is this any different if somebody is at a hospital for let's say cancer or some type of physical illness and they just get them stabilized and say, good luck to you because your problem is too complicated. We're gonna stabilize you and then we're gonna send you out into the world. Let's say somebody goes to a hospital and they are bleeding or they need a heart transplant and they say you know what your case is a little bit too complicated i know you need this heart plant transplant immediately or i know you need these stitches immediately but you know what we're going to give you a band-aid because great we've stopped the bleeding we know you're going to end up needing stitches but we're not going to do that we're going to send you back out into the world good luck to you and they end up bleeding because they didn't get the stitches the problem is people treat mental health differently from what they treat people who have cancer, who need a heart transplant. Basically, the evidence that I've heard from the defense's witness is she never should have been released from the hospital with her mental health issues. There's no doubt in my mind that she was going through an episode when this offense was committed. The only issue for the court to consider is whether or not she should be going to prison or whether or not she should be going to probation. So if you all want to address issues for closing arguments, it would seem where the address should be coming in from both parties would be, was she released from the hospital? Should she have been released from the hospital? Did they know releasing her from the hospital, she was gonna have an episode? Did they know they were sending somebody out in this world with schizophrenia, with no medication to go forth on their own? And as I told both parties, I'm aware of mental health conditions. I'm aware of what happens with people who have schizophrenia and they not receive treatment. I'm aware of what people who don't see receive treatment for bipolar. And I'm aware of the system where people are tired. People don't want to deal with anybody who is causing problem problems at the state hospital, wherever they be. And their thing is, let's med them up. Let's get them stabilized so we can push them on. I read all the documents. I read all the defense's documents. I read the um, PSI report. I read the stipulations. And the documents that's been provided to the court by the defense is they wanted to get rid of her because she her problem was too complicated. And then I read the stipulations, I'm sorry, the documents that were admitted without objections where when she first came in to see them, she was accusing people of raping her, accusing people of beating her up, accusing people of stabbing her father, accusing people of out to get her, accusing the staff of rape. And they didn't quit on her. They just said, well, she's accusing staff person of rape. It's not true. What we're gonna do is we're gonna end up having more people in the room. So those are the issues that need to be addressed for the court to make a decision on whether or not I'm sending her to prison or sending her to some sort of inpatient treatment facility. So that's what I would like to hear in closing, because honestly, I already know. I know that she did a terrible thing to the complainant in this case. I know that this complainant was laying ble bleeding on the floor in a restroom. I know that she was here in San Antonio trying to enjoy her vacation, that she was on a bus. 
So if both parties can focus on why I should send her to prison or why I should give her probation, I already have read and I know that the complainant in this case could have died. I know that um, the complainant's relative came in and saved her life. I think that if the complainant's relative hadn't come in at that point in time, she would probably be dead. I know from witnesses' statements that the complainant's life is never going to be the same again. I know that she's not going to be able to do everything that she used to do. So if everybody would like to focus on that, that would help the court make a decision. And I have an open mind both ways. So I will hear argument. I guess, Judge... It comes down to if she receives probation and she does some sort of outpatient treatment, she eventually will be back mm -hmm. in the community. And I think it, it once again raises the, the danger level to the community. So you're she, saying it would be fine for her to be on probation if she's in inpatient treatment for the, the entire length of probation? No, I'm saying if she's on probation, she, it, she will be out. All right. So let's say she goes to prison. At some point in time, she's going to get out of prison because the state is not asking for a life sentence. She's not looking at a life sentence for this offense. So when she goes to prison, if, if I send her to prison and she gets out, then, then where are we? Well, I mean, but Judge, I think the arguments to me made if she gets probation as well. Probation isn't something that lasts forever either. So either she's going to be on probation and be putting the community at risk because she's not in prison or she's going to be in prison. Well, she's if she's on probation treatment while she's in prison, if she's on probation and in she and she's in a facility because she can be on probation for 10 years. And if she's in a facility for 10 years receiving treatment, how is that any different than her going into prison and what the state has offered her for a prison sentence? She will be eligible for parole in half the time. And if she's stabilized, she's probably going to be released in half the time. These are questions the court has. What it comes down to for the state judge is just the level of violence that is that is this case. I, I think it's a person who deserves to go to prison and work on her mental health there. There's treatment that she can receive while she's in prison. It's not like we are sending her to prison and she won't receive any type of, of treatment while she's there. I think, but that gets her out of the community and off the street and prevents her from committing yet another aggravated assault. And I also, I noticed in, in some of the records from UHS, it says the officer states that she's getting into arguments with other inmates for action seeming manipulative and attributed to behavior. I think even while she is, even if she were to be in some sort of inpatient treatment, she's putting others at that treatment facility in, in danger from her violent or, or aggressive behavior. And so a place, a person like that, who is even showing signs of aggression while being held in a hospital or inpatient type facility, uh, the safest place for everyone is for her to be in prison. So your answer then is let her cause drama, trauma, and be violent at the prison with other inmates? I believe prison and her receiving treatment in prison is more appropriate than her being on probation. I proceed. Yes. Judge, I know you're aware of this, but I just want to emphasize universal underfunding, no, indivi no consistent individualized care, lack of beds available, revolving door hospitalizations, too few intermediate care programs. Judge, that's just a snapshot of some of the inadequacies of our mental health system. As my, my witness pointed out, we've come a long way, Judge, but my client is an example of what happens when we fail, Judge, and our mental health system failed her. I am in no way trying to minimize the pain that that family went through. My heart goes out to them, Judge. But the reality of my client's life is one day she woke up and she heard voices. I know this court has gone over the PSI, Judge. 
she graduated from high school. She was in college for some time, Judge. She wanted to be a medical assistant. My client had dreams. And I, I do want to address, the state asked my Ms. Morales if my client is a dangerous person. And that just goes to the stigma of, of mental health, Judge. My client is not a dangerous person. She is sick. She is symptomatic, but she can get better. She's never received a chance to get better, Judge. I'm not asking for her to go into the community. I'm not asking for you to put her on probation, release her tomorrow, put her on outpatient, and send her on her way. We saw what happened, Judge. We saw what happened since back in 2015 when, when, when these hospitals did that. And, and not, these, aren't, these are medical professionals notating on the date of discharge that she's still psychotic that they're still having to monitor to her monitor her every 15 minutes. And then not only that, Methodist Specialty, they, they explored the avenue of sending her to SASH. Why they didn't do it is absolutely beyond me because maybe we wouldn't be here if my client was committed back then in a hospital, inpatient, receiving the care that she needs, Judge, that would have given her insight because lack of insight that's a symptom of schizophrenia schizophrenia as you know affects our brain and how we react and with medication it can be managed judge you ask the state what's going to happen when she re gets released judge she's going to be worse she's going to be worse and it's going to lead right back here if she's impatient long enough judge my client has the chance to lead a normal life i wish that this, things were different, that maybe our office came in contact with her sooner, but Judge, we didn't, and we're here today. And my client is begging you for help. All right. So with regards to this case, was there a request for a sanity evaluation? Was the sanity evaluation completed? Yes, Your Honor. And what was the result of the sanity evaluation? She was deemed sane, Judge. Okay. All right. Ms. Gonzalez, uh, I do feel as though um, Bear County and society should apologize to you. And let me just tell you why. Because it's clear from the court that you should have been at a mental hospital. But somebody dropped the ball. Somebody just wanted to do triage and send you out into the world, knowing that you should not have been sent out in the world, that you probably should have still been at the um, mental hospital receiving treatment. And they should apologize to the complainant in this case as well, because who knows, maybe that would not have happened to her if you were where you were supposed to be. But at the same um Point. I'm looking at the photos. Have you seen the photos of the injuries? Counsel, do you want to show the photos to your client? And I wanted you to see those because I wanted you to know what, and I'm sorry, counsel, this is for you as well. I wanted you to see those because I wanted you to know everything that I'm looking at and everything that I'm considering. And I take all these cases very seriously. And people don't realize sometimes how hard my job is because everybody wants something. I know what the state wants. I know what your attorney wants. I know what the complainants want. And then I have to make a decision. And part of my decision making is uh, protecting the community. I look at your criminal history. Consider any other evidence that's presented to me to make a decision. Right now, this case would be so easy if you were found insane at the time of the offense, because if you're you're found insane at the time of an offense, then that basically means you don't know right from wrong. And that means, and your attorney will tell you, that means that 
uh, you're not responsible because basically you don't know right from wrong. You understand? But in this case, it's not a situation of you not knowing right from wrong. All right. And I do understand mental health issues. And I, as a defense attorney, I had so many clients who had mental health issues and I had so many clients who ended up um, being under uh, a doctor's care for the length of the um, offense that they were on. I had some clients who uh, were found insane and they were charged with murder, but they were found insane, which would mean because the range of punishment for murder is up to life in prison, they would be under care for life. And But I don't have that situation here. So I don't have somebody saying that you were saying insane at the time of the offense. And the reason why I'm taking my time, and I try to do this with everyone who's before me, so that they will know that I listened and I heard their witnesses and I heard what was given to me. Because I never want anyone to appear before me and they assume that I'm not listening to them. Because sometimes you may see me doing three things at one time and people are like, oh, judge is not listening. But I do. I'm able to multitask. And so I have listened to everything. And it is a shame that um, you were not given the help that you needed at the time that you needed. And it was a shame that they released you. But with that being said, uh, I don't feel comfortable uh, granting your application for deferred adjudication. So I am going to find you guilty. According to the plea bargain agreement, uh, it is a cap of 13 years. Does anyone wish to speak to the cap? I do, Judge. All right. State? Judge, uh, the state is fully aware of the plea bargain agreement. We, we made that agreement. We feel that um, the, the cap and, and you reaching the cap is appropriate or that's not the, the, the offer that we would have made based on everything, based on, on the case itself, based on all the facts. That was the plea bargain agreement that, not, that we made and defense agreed to. And so for that, we're going to ask the court to use its judgment, but we are asking the court to um, considering everything to to meet the cap. And judge, may I proceed, judge? Yes. Judge, I'm asking you to take into consideration all of the documents that I provided to the court today, judge, as you have recognized my client has been sick for a very long time. And because of that, and those mitigating circumstances, judge, I'm asking for the lower end of the punishment range, judge. All right. Uh, Ms. Gonzalez, what do you think you deserve? What do you think would be an appropriate sentence for you? Some medical treatment in a hospital outpatient aid. All right. So that ship has sailed. So you're going to be going to prison. So the state is asking for 13 years. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want, I want him to be in some kind of treatment in here. If they have well, treatment in here, I can take it in here. Well, here's the thing. At the prison, they do have a mental health treatment facility there. And I'm going to put on the docket sheet that you receive and that you, you receive the mental health that they provide. You know what, I mean, maybe I should read my letter so you understand because I don't think I deserve to go to treatment. I, perhaps you need to read, uh, listen to my letter. I don't think I should, I don't think I deserve to go to treatment because okay. this is what I have to say. All right, well, just a second. This is what the court is gonna do. The court is finding you guilty. The court is gonna sentence you to 12 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's restitution, if any, to Ruth Turner. There's to be no contact with Ruth Turner, Frank Turner, Dava Turner. I'm going to recommend that she be placed at the Texas Mental Health Unit at the prison. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. Well, well what I have to say is why I deserve mental health treatment here, if they have it, okay. instead of going to prison. Since 2015, I was hearing voices and I've heard screams and and I had saw flames, little images of flames, you know, in my visions around the room in my house. And I told my parents about it and I cried because of these visions of people coming in my house. I told my mom about it and she took me to the medical, she took me to the hospital to get medical treatment. 
I went to several hospitals and was taking medicine for schizophrenia and seeing flames and, and hearing voices. And But I don't believe I was myself. I'm not a murderer. Um, according to what the pictures I saw, um, the stab wound was on the right side. She doesn't have stab wounds on, she doesn't have stab wounds on the right side of her neck. And I saw it. Mm -hmm. I stabbed her right here. She doesn't have that. And um, I all right. So, Miss myself, I would Miss Gonzalez. All right, let me explain something to you, okay? All right. So, I understand what's going in your on in your life, and I understand that the state hospital and those people in the medical field, medical field for mental health, dropped the ball. They didn't do right by you. That is why I'm giving you 12 years in prison as opposed to the 13. What I'm telling you is at the prison, I'm gonna request that you be uh, placed into in the mental health unit. And um, Defense, I know you're aware that there, there's more than one mental health unit. So they'll evaluate her and see which mental health unit is appropriate for her stay. Uh, I'm gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. We can go off the record. Um, counsel, thank you for presenting that information to the court. And hopefully, um, you know, the state hospital will do better. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do have victim impact.